speak to a uh, question of economy, uh, people's livelihoods, and how that are connected to defending the Constitution and connected to the BBI political project. We are trying to get the message across to Kenyans that the BBI, the handshake political project, whose anniversary is the bad adversary, is not just the BBI or whatever, the Constitution Amendment Bill. The Constitution Amendment Bill is just one piece in a big political project to restore the authoritarian state uh, that to many of us lived through uh, in the 70s and 80s, many young people did not live through. And we think we need to convey to you what these people are trying to restore uh, so that uh, you know what it means for you as young people. Because sometimes you see that young people are wondering all these political questions of freedom and democracy, what do they have to do with my livelihood? People are very busy trying to make ends meet. What does it mean to me and why should I get involved? I want to start by the point that there's a lot of conversation within BBI about 35% and all sorts of things that the government is going to deliver. A government which has not delivered much. It has been selling hope for nine years uh, and borrowing huge amounts of money and investing that money in wasteful projects. They have not used that money. If they had used that money well, Kenyans would not be struggling to make ends meet. But as I have said many times, the chickens have come home to roost. The country is broke. Those for you who follow news will know that the government has just concluded negotiations with the IMF for a three-year program. Now, these are the programs we used to have in the early 90s. Many of you do not know, young people do not experience live through called SAPS, Structural Adjustment Programs. Countries, when they go broke, unlike companies, are not liquidated. This IMF program is the equivalent of putting the country in receivership. Okay? So Kenya is in receivership. So any promises anybody is making to you that they are going to deliver 35%, that they are going to do this, those programs have to be approved by the IMF in Washington and they will not be approved. Already, this is already being implemented. The austerity is already being implemented. The tax measures you have seen being implemented since January are part of it. There is going to be rollback and of government expenditure particularly, and that tends to hit mostly the services to people. There is a demand that the government retrenched close to 100,000 people during the course of the program. Many of you young people have not experienced this, and this holds the whole economy. So the message is, if a government has been in power for nine years, going to 10, and the end is it is put in receivership by the international financial institutions, that government has failed, isn't it? It's a failed government. What then should be the fate of that government. It should be voted out, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Now, the only recourse we have as citizens when a government fails is the ballot. It's the power to vote it out of office, yeah? to fire them. You should have them as citizens if we are sovereign that sovereignty is exercised by having the power to hire and fire. and fire. And you know that where you work, or if you're an employee or an employer, or even if you have contracted somebody to provide you the services, 
It's based on performance. If they deliver, you pay. If they do not, you fire. Now, BBI is about taking away our power to hire and fire governments based on their performance. Yeah? Because you have observed that when the 2017 election happened, it was annulled by the Supreme Court. That is how we are here. The Supreme Court said that the election must be conducted as per the Constitution. Uh, the IEBC, which was captured by the government and the incumbent, said that it will not happen. They will not implement the recommendations of the of, of, of the Supreme Court in the repeat election, and obviously that made the opposition to, to boycott the election. And the process led on that. Instead of implementing the Constitution, Uhuru and Raila got together in a private, private deal. That's what we are dealing with today. So the process of subverting the Constitution and getting away from the power of citizens to hire and fire them, uh, started then. And what they are doing now is to create a mechanism. They want to institutionalize arrangements where they have a majoritarian tribe kingpin system, and they can be succeeding themselves by handing over power to whichever kingpin of the tribe that they want and the power rotates among them. They do not want to be hired and fired by citizens. Now, another thing we want to convey message to the public is that the BPI referendum, if it comes, is not the end. People are seeing it. We are seeing as if it will be the final arbiter, that the vote whether we vote yes or no will be the final arbiter. It isn't, because the objective is to open up the Constitution. This Constitution has survived 10 years. It's the longest that a Constitution has survived in this country. They did not think it would last that long. They need to open it up so that they are not subjected to it. The idea is to tear up. And we know after the BPI, you've opened it with the BBI, then everything is up for grabs. It's game. The targets, we think, if these go through, we know the things they are most against. One of them is term limits. So if they open up the constitution with the BPI, they can bribe and intimidate parliament, they can probably rig the, the referendum. What is to stop them to come for a second helping? And the second helping will be to remove term limits. And that can be done before 2022. Mm -hmm. They can go together or a third helping, which is to take away judicial independence. Because once you take away the judicial independence, something like the Maraga ruling will never, will never happen again. Because that really rankles. And finally, because this has happened before, devolution. Because devolution is the one which attempts to remove control of resources and takes away power from them. They don't like it and we know it. We had independent local authorities at independence. By, I think, around 1974, amendments have been made that they had actually become appendages of the Ministry of Local Government. Devol if they open the constitution, devolution will go the same way. So, if term limits go, and independent judiciary goes, and devolution goes, what will be left? The ultimate, which is what you see in a very devious way, is the power of citizens even to protest, even to challenge what they are doing. And that is in the Bill of Rights, very innocuous looking things. The freedom of speech and freedom of assembly are the most powerful political 
instruments that citizens have. That if we disagree with the way we are governed, we can speak and we can assemble. Because what that does is undermine the legitimacy of those people who are trying to lie that they are governing people and the people agree with them. You have seen already that they are assaulting those power. I saw last week or the week before uh, some activists from the coast, Muhuri, were arrested in Taita. Mm -hmm. And they were protesting health services mm -hmm. failure. That's how they, they push the limit. They push the envelope. So that within no time, meetings like this will not happen. We've been there before. Sheikh has talked about it. So we want to, uh, as I conclude, we want the young people to know that already there is a lot of regression. The kind of fear, atmosphere of fear, that we are seeing today is not something we have seen since the 80s. Those of us who are there in the 80s remember this. He talked about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is you want to ask your colleagues, you want to ask the people, why would you expect people who have failed to deliver when you have a constitution which holds them accountable? After they have removed those accountability mechanisms, why? Why would they deliver? Why would they bother to deliver? So the, we want to emphasize and get people to reflect on that. There is a direct connection, very direct connection, between your political rights and your livelihoods. And the capacity of government to not destroy, they don't have to deliver, not destroy your livelihoods because they're doing their destroying. And if they take away the political rights, it's not an either or. Political rights and economic uh, and social rights and your well-being are inextricably bound. If they take away the constitution, the Clinton constitution, we can assure you, you will be both impoverished and oppressed. Finally, we want you to reflect on the fact that defending the freedom that we have today, the Constitution of Kenya 2010 that we have won for ourselves, is so much easier. It looks difficult, but what we have to sacrifice is so little compared to what you would have to sacrifice to regain that freedom when you've lost it. Those of us who've been there, we know. If we lose it, regaining it may even come after actual physical war. If you look at this where people have lost their, 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 their freedom, once these people take away our freedoms and they're enjoying the power, they don't give it up. You have to fight. So good people, let us defend what we have because the price that would have to be paid to regain it is so much higher. Thank you very much.